Hey guys, so I finally got around to do that last step in the Robbie's knife, the giveaway winner's knife, and that's a shit. I have plenty of Kydex tutorials, but I wanted to keep it everything, you know, from start to finish, how I made this knife. So last step, the shit. Uh, there's a couple differences from what I used to do before, very minor stuff. Uh, using duct tape, a lot of people were surprised when I mentioned it in some of the comments before that I used duct tape. I have no problems with duct tape, it's it's very good, I don't have to put bazillion layers, you know, it's cheaper than the, you know, blue scotch tape, painter's tape. Uh, on these larger blades I put like four or five layers, you see me doing like there. Uh, this blade was a little different because uh, it had a little step up on the top spine, so what I you saw me do, I grab uh, one of the like quarter inch pins and I just put it in there and uh, tape it with the tape, so that kind of, you know, filled up that ridge on the top of the spine from the handle to the tip and there was a little trick I just you know happened to come up with for that certain blade so you see I cut off the you know all the extra duct tape I have around then I put it on the kydex just so I can mark the length and now the width you see this one will be just the fold over sheet so what I did I put the knife in there and then just flipped it over and marked it cut just you know slice the kydex a little bit and then as you bend it it breaks nice and easy um, I'm gonna get the heat gun uh, one thing what I've changed since last time I'm using this metal tin from Leatherman tool the metal actually reflects the heat really well so it kind of works a little better for me so what you're gonna see me do I hit up the kydex to the point where I can bend at least a little bit. This, these large ones are hard. Uh, especially because these large ones you cannot even fit to the, even if you were set up with the toaster oven, you can because it's too big for the toaster oven. So you see me, what I do, I try to work it in, soften it up on one side so I can actually bend it. And then I create a tunnel from that kydex. I create a tunnel so the heat actually circulates inside and it doesn't take really very, very long for the whole big piece of kydex like this to heat up. It's probably a matter of, I don't know, three, four minutes to do this. It's sped up so it's it looks really fast, but it really doesn't take that long when you create that tunnel and on the end of the tunnel you have that metal metal tin box that reflects the heat. It's, it's pretty fast. So yeah, I make sure that it's nice and soft, like really, really soft, the whole kydex and then I'm gonna really quickly move it into the, you know, I get the Kydex press ready in the meanwhile and I'll, I'm gonna try it as fast as I can, move the Kydex into the press, put it in, you know, locate the knife the way I need, the way I want and close the Kydex press. I have a tutorial how I did this Kydex press if anybody is interested. It's very cheap, very simple to do. The most expensive thing is the foam that I, me personally, I bought it from knife kits. I, ever since I started Kydex, that's where I'm getting my stuff for Kydex. So I'm very happy with it. There are a lot, couple different variations from USA Knife Maker. I use the knife kits foam, I'm happy with it. I never really needed to try anything. Next step is marking the rivets. You saw me, I grab the, always grab a tech lock and I always make sure that I put the tech lock all the way up where I can so that's gonna be my first hole because normally you would guess that you 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 would want to put that first hole up up higher but that would mean that it's too high for the to mount the tech lock so what i do i just grab the tech lock put it in and that's my first mark and from there on one and a half inch marks sometimes you gotta be sure when you have uh, the tip of the knife wider than the heel you want to make sure that the you know the distance from the top of the sheet to the first rivet is the same as uh, you know the widest portion of the of the blade here you already see me in the workshop uh, starting to drill quarter inch drill this is the one that has like pointy tip i find it easier to locate you know to position the dr the hole better and it also leaves a little less burr than the regular drill bits so i drill the drill the holes once I'm done with the holes, I actually set the rivets in. I put the rivets in just so I have an idea where exactly the rivets end, so how far I can send it down to. And also, also when you're sending it down, Kydex flexes, no? So the rivets hold the two sides in place. 
so it won't flex on me so I won't end up with one side sanded out more than the other side if I would you know not put them there I take the yellow metal snips the shears and uh, cut off the excess kydex all I can you know the it's faster than grinding it off so if I can access it I'll cut it off with the snips and here comes 50 grit uh, this is aluminum oxide belt I'm gonna swap it 50 grit aluminum oxide belt it takes off that kydex really quick so you just shape it the way you want you know make it nice and I like to do the shades you know copying the copying the blade size blade shape you know nice and natural curvatures in there so basic shaping with the 50 grit and then I will actually take uh, take uh, some worn out like really high grit belt just to clean up the edges a little bit so I don't have to go that crazy with the hand sponge uh, at the end one thing what you might notice I did not set the rivets in still they're still just put in a place but not set because once I'm done with all this with the with the belt all the belts and sanding and all that stuff and hand sponge I'm gonna clear clean the inside of the sheet as much as I can you know try to get every little speck off from the inside you know wipe it off scrape it off vacuum it off sometimes I try to wash it with a WD-40 you know just to make sure that there is nothing inside because Kydex itself does not scratch the metal, the knife. Uh, it's always the, the kind of debris, the little dust from the from the sanding belts and stuff like that. That's what scratches the knives or the dirt. Not the Kydex itself. Kydex itself is too soft to scratch the scratch the steel. Most of what I found out, even when I do this, I still get scratches sometimes. <clears throat> and I suspect that it's that the mouth of the sheet where you put the knife in and out. There must be some, you know, again, some kind of residue from the sanding. And as you pass the knife through it, that's what scratches it. Sometimes you just, you know, uh, it's 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 matter of luck. You know, some shades will come out perfect, some not. But it's still just, you know, it's accessory. It's not like it's supposed to be used. If you don't want to get scratched, then, you know, just don't even get the shade. Just buy a knife and put it on the shelf. <laughs> you don't need the shade for it. If you want to use it you need a sheet and in that case you shouldn't worry about if it scratches or not <laughs> that's my opinion so you saw me cleaning it up real well with the sanding sponge now I'm gonna vacuum the inside I actually like slide the vacuum hose in to get everything out of there and then the last step from actual making it will be just setting the rivets in you're gonna see me do it in the background still rocking those uh, the dies from knife kits that are originally for the press but I don't have the press, I just use the hammer, it still works perfect. Still nothing broke, nothing like bandit. You can see that they are really worn out. I mean, the, that die set thousands of rivets at this point. Since I started, I literally did thousands of rivets. So, one of the best investments I guess I ever did. <laughs> $35 set of dies for Kydex rivets. Uh, I am actually tempted to get the little you know half ton press and set it up because it is a little nicer it is kind of simpler and everything it's probably not faster because I already have really fast setup on it but who knows so here I'm back in the room gonna take off the duct tape here you see that taking off the duct tape is really not that hard I just cut the top off by riding the the exacto blade right on the spine so I'm not I don't scratch it or anything and I just rip off the duct tape. I take off the pin first out, that like a uh, filler what I used. And look, I just rip off the duct tape really easy. It's not that hard. Just make sure that your hand doesn't slip or something and you don't cut yourself. Nice and easy. Sometimes there is a little bit of residue from the from the glue. Most of the time actually there is almost nothing. Even that little residue there is actually not glue residue. It's just like, you know, kind of like I don't know what would you call it residue. It's just wipe it off with WD-40. Every cleaning, like throughout the process of making the knife, it's still with just WD-40. It's the cheapest one. It's the it's the you know it's good cleaner for everything. It gets all, off all the uh, gunk. It prevents rusting and all that stuff. I'm gonna show you on the end what I use for actual finishing. But you see me cleaning it off, trying the shit for the first time. You know since it was done. See how the fit is. If I need to do any adjustments, in this case, I'm gonna do a little thumb ramp because it will be nicer for to access the knife.
to pull it out and the way I do it is actually very simple you just grab the heat gun again and uh, hit the top of the spine the top right there where the sheet ends this way also if if the retention is too stiff you can adjust the retention pretty much the same way except you're gonna hit the uh, all around the top of the handle in my case I like the retention it was nice and strong yet still pretty easy inserting and, and removing so I'm heating up only the top portion you see that peak of the shade there I'll check it you know once in a while how soft it is and once it's soft enough put my finger in there and uh, kind of like try to pull it out of the knife like as hard as you can try to pull it out of the knife and that will create that little thumb ramp and uh, it's actually very easy you see me how I'm like fighting with it because it is stiff you kind of forcing that kydex to bend out of shape but there you go created a nice little thumb ramp and that's actually perfect that that lets you know that's all you need for a little thumb ramp and it works perfect and uh, <laughs> I encourage everybody to get used to the thumb rims. I've seen too many times people pulling out the knife out of the shade without using the thumb rim, especially when it is there. And all it is you asking for problems because sometimes the shades are stiff and you can get hurt while pulling out the knife the wrong way. So super strong retention, but yet pretty nice and easy to remove. Came out came out pretty decent this shit. Nothing fancy, but works great. And the last step, as I mentioned, last last step, I always coat that blade with that fluid film. It's great, it's FDA approved, you know, it's food, f uh, you can pre prep food with it without worrying about some chemicals or something. It's, you know, sheep, lanolin extract, protects the blade from rust and it actually makes it look pretty cool, it creates kind of like a film. So that's always the last step, you know, up till now everything was WD-40, but the last step, wipe it up and coat it with that fluid film. So I hope you enjoyed it guys, thank you for watching, take care, stay safe and remember, don't cut yourself.